all right me it is the matinee before the last show for this section of shows but last night i finished arthur miller's death of a salesman um a book and a play that i am really interested in teaching because it is a combination of accessible while also having some very good things to look at and, and show why we look at symbolism and why we do this and why we do this and why authors do this X, Y, and Z, right? Um, the play itself is really designed to be only performed in two acts, right? And have each one of those acts as one long um, scene uh, in which you have this minimal cast that is moving everything um, but also there's just minimal set pieces in general right um, very very interesting piece um, which is part of the reason why I would be I'm, I'm very interested in teaching it um, because the story itself follows that of, of Willie Loman, who is in his early to mid 60s and seems to have just come to this realization that what he has been doing as a salesman is not valuable in the way that he wants it to be, right? And he, he consistently looks at, around at the world around him and thinks about all these decisions that he could have made, um, but then turned down because he wanted to be more successful or more popular than the other things would have given him. At least that's what he initially thinks. And we get to this point of where we are in the play, of where the present time is in the play, I should say, in which Willie Loman is a struggling businessman he has been taken off of salary from his job and he only works commission now um, effectively in the same way that people just starting would be working at, at, at the same level and about him realizing his own failures but not being able to admit that they're his failures right um to say that the story is like, it's not a, the American dream is dead, everything sucks about America story, right? And that's, I think the way it gets often perceived, because it's not that. It is showing that the American dream has been perverted. It is a um, caricature of itself, right? instead of trying to be self-sufficient and and live live modestly and live comfortably right the american dream has become we all need to be john d rockefeller right and we all need to have this enormous sum of money to do these things right and that's simply not the case right that's not inherently that's not what the american dream is but that's the way that it has become perverted really over the past 50 years or so, uh, closer to 60 now. That's the way it's been perverted at this point of where we're constantly searching for money, 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 money. And we lose sight of the physical things around us and the important things that are around us, right? It's the, it's the whole phrase of money can't buy happiness, right? Yes, it is more comfortable to cry in a Mercedes Benz than it is on a bike, right? But that's not what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about how once you will get to a certain point of comfortability and, and, and humbleness and modesty, once you've reached that point, right, it's, there's no need to become excessive about what you are earning and what you are spending, right? Um, and what we see is Willie Loman throughout the story, because the way it's structured is we have this 
current time that is happening with Willie Loman as 63 years old, his sons as being in their 30s and all of their struggles. But then every once in a while, we will get this sudden flashback, right, of, of, of Willie Loman thinking back to when his boys were either young or in high school. And in those points, right, it's signified by the fact that he's breaking his own boundaries of, of the house or, or whatever scene that he's in. Um, but we also see this version of his life that is more beautiful than, than it really was, right? Um, and so Willie is kind of like battling between these two things, right? Of where his, his memory of the past and the beauty of the past is significantly different than, than the reality of today, but also the reality of those situations in general. Um, and one of the ways that ends up coming up is through the consistent talk of, of the bills that Willie Loman has to pay, right? Of where, because he has tried to keep up with the Joneses, right? This materialism of going beyond what the expectations were of the um, American dream, he has purchased all these things and done all these things, but now they're coming back to haunt him because now he has to continuously make payments on them, right? And his earnings have not kept up with the amount of money that he is spending, right? And this then comes to full fruition through two different things, right? It comes through uh, when they talk about the house, right? Because at the very end, the house has like two more payments left on it. And he that's when Willie Loman takes his own life. Um, and it's, it's this point of where we were almost at the point where everything was going to be solved and things were going to be right. We were almost at that point, but everything previously has, has, has been so overwhelming and been made full of so many poor decisions that even if we get to this point where everything's all right, we don't like our debts to pay, does it really matter? Right, um, and the second portion is within the ways that Willie Loman has attempted to take his own life, or has has thought about taking his own life. The biggest one is is the rubber hose that gets brought up a few different times. Um, basically, what that is, I had to kind of look this up because it didn't make sense to me because I haven't seen this this form of HVAC effectively in heating is it was a rubber pipe that he could siphon off gases from um, in order to take his own life, right? Um, and in doing so, right, he would have escaped all of his issues, right? But also his death would have been caused by all of these new implementations that he's been constantly purchasing and buying, purchasing and buying without thinking about this humbleness and modesty that, that he's had he should have had this entire time right um so it's he's achieved the american dream of he has all these things but now he's overbought and he's overspent and now his dream is falling apart and it's killing him um and then we have um the scenes with with biff and with, um, because that's, that's really the big one is Biff, is really Biff's story is one that is about being in a world that has taught you all the wrong things. And then when you have a chance to make it right, you see that your idol has failed, right? Um, Biff has gotten through all of his, all had gone through all of his life um, with pretty heavy expectations, but also those expectations not ever needing to be achieved because Biff, I'm sorry, because Willie has always been on this constant thing about being a salesman of where if you, if you just look good and you can talk good and you can make a good impression, then you just get whatever you want. Right. And that's always been Willie's line of thinking, 
right? Which, of course, we see is, ends up being wrong and poor, but that's the way that Biff has been brought up. And then Biff ends up making one huge mistake, right, of where he's he's on his way to go attend the University of Virginia uh, to play football on a scholarship, and he ends up flunking this last math test because he just continuously skips this class, right? And in this conversation, Willie is blaming everyone else except Biff. He's blaming Bernard for never... For not giving him the answers right he's blaming the teacher for not round giving him like six extra points um just to pass him right um he wants to blame everyone else except for his own son right and but that sort of instills this idea that like if if that you can get away with things if you just never have to take responsibility for them right um and then we see biff goes and tries to talk to his dad um and he finds out that his dad is having an affair um while he's away on trips biff completely loses it loses all motivation refuses to do anything at this point um and willie sees it as this sort of spite against the world right it is is biff spiting him and refusing to do anything because of um spite for this one incident right whereas what we really see is that biff just isn't the kind of person that willie wants him to be biff has been constantly told and constantly raised as he's a leader he just gets to do whatever he wants because he's good looking and he has charisma um and he's always gonna be right and he was always gonna you know he's always gonna do whatever he wants but in reality Biff is just a guy, right? He's just a dude. And I, that's one of those hard things that's, that's, that's hard to reckon with, um, especially when we talk about working with teenagers, but then also working with young adults and then even older adults, is that sometimes you have to recognize that you're just someone, right? Not everyone gets to be famous. Not everyone gets to be the richest person alive. Right, and it's 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 a thing that is is hard to reckon with when your idea of what the American dream is is to have all this material wealth and be constantly gaining, constantly gaining, constantly gaining. Right, once that no longer happens, and you get stuck, but your envisionment is you always have to be better. Right, that's where the issues come in. Right, sometimes you're just an ordinary person. And that's okay. The vast majority of us are just ordinary people. Um, but it's something that Willie has refused to do and refused to learn. And it is transferred over to Biff. And because of this, the whole family has fallen apart. Because of the immense expectations that do not coincide with, it, with the reality of their situations. Right? Um... yeah right it's it's i was talking with someone and they they called this book and arthur miller pretentious i don't think it's pretentious right i think it is just simple right because there's not a lot of you're not having to dig for these things right they're just there Right? But they're not just there in the way that like the alchemist is just there, right? Because the alchemist strips out everything versus this in which we, we're still within this character in the setting, but there's there's an accessibility and simpleness to it um, that I that I enjoy because I I feel that is a, a good thing to look at when you're teaching, right? Um, Anything else about this book? Um, there's the whole what's in a name thing, right? Um, there's there's two ones to point out. Uh, the first one is Willie, right? Willie is 63 years old, right? And he still goes by the name Willie, which is a name that we 
generally associate with children, right? Or with people that are um, kind of eccentric outside of the outside of the ways a little bit. And by naming this character Willie, right, we get this immediate this immediate impression that this is a character that is not serious, right? Um, because simply because of the name, right? Because of what we associate that name with. Um, and it really shows that Willie has come to a point in his life where he has either refused to grow up and refused to take on these new responsibilities and new challenges, or he doesn't realize that he hasn't grown up and changed, right? It's, it's one of those two things. Um, and the only time he ever gets called William is when he's about to take his own life, right? Or, or is really, really thinking about taking his own life because that's the only way to get the insurance money at this point to then hopefully save everyone, right? Um, and then the other one is Happy, right? Happy um, is just the name of, it's, it's the second son Right, and he doesn't play this super huge role in in the in the in the play, but his role there is to effectively make everyone else happy. Right, he is willing to lie to his dad um, about every single situation that the, that the brothers have found themselves in to make his dad happy. He's willing to try to lie to his mom to make it seem like. Um, everything at their meeting went well, right? Even though he is very clearly caught in a lie, he refuses to give up on it because admitting what actually happened would then make people sad. And so he's willing to lie, lie and cheat and, and, and scheme his way to, to try and make those around him happy, right? Um, which, of course, is then against um, what 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 reality is right um, and I guess the final symbolism is is the whole seed talk at the end right um, the the boys leave the dinner and just leave their father at the restaurant um, and Willie then goes uh, effectively insane at this point and buys a whole bunch of seeds and is trying to plant a garden and there's a whole bunch of talk about the seeds right at the end of this play um and that's of course the the seeds of of growth and living right um as a symbol because what we've seen is in this job that willie has as a traveling salesman although yes he has made good money Yes, he has been able to to buy things and have a home and have a family. What has happened is he's never taken the time to settle, right? He has never taken the time to actively put time into those around him um, and make their lives better, right? Um, and so what he's doing is he's planting the seeds of growth, right? Which then, of course, comes to full fruition when he takes his own life, right? Because that is the seed that he can get, right? Because by doing so, and by crashing the car, he is then able to give this huge insurance payout to his wife and to, to his sons um, that will then give them the opportunity to, to, to live fruitfully, right? Um, but yeah, that's that. That's, that's Death of a Salesman.